Karen Bryant for MMA Heat. I'm here with UFC President Dana White. It's UFC 160, Cain Velasquez versus Antonio Silva for the second time. How impressed were you with, with, with Cain the first time, and what do you think the odds are that he's going to be able to repeat that? Yeah, no, Cain always impresses me. You know, I don't ever pick favorites, but um, I mean, I don't pick who's going to win, yeah. but I I think that Cain Velasquez is the best heavyweight in the world. I think he's, he is the guy that can do it all. He can stand up. He's got a great chin. He's got knockout power. He's got uh, a, a incredible wrestling. And the thing about that I love about Cain the most is, you know, I always call him the Terminator. He comes in, and, and, and if he stands, I mean, that last fight with Junior Dos Santos, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think he was going to stand up and bang. I thought he was going to have to try to wrestle. He stood up with him the whole time, and, and wow. Yeah. Then when he gets you to the ground, if he's on top and the guard, he's smashing you the whole time. If you try to roll over to your back, he's on this side. He's on that side. He's all over you. You can't get away from this guy. He is the best heavyweight in the world. And I really feel like the loss of the title was was a good thing for him in a way. It's a, he's even more intense, even more focused. And when you talk to Daniel Cormier about their training together, he's like, "This, yeah, this is the number one guy on the planet. Yeah. He's, he, I, I, he's the man. I think Cain Velasquez is the man. I think he's the best heavyweight in the world and one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world. So now you have 24, we found out from Schaller, 24 million households now. You just signed a deal in Mexico. Yeah. How perfect is the timing that you got it done in before Cain was fighting? Timing is funny, huh? Yeah, it's, it, it's awesome. I mean, we've been working on Mexico for a long time, even though we know we're getting huge strides in that country. Uh, you know, it's like England, getting these TV deals done isn't that easy sometimes. Uh, we finally got this on and, and uh, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. Mark Hunt, you know, had some troubles getting here. How concerned were you that that fight wasn't going to happen? And did you have a backup plan for Junior? No, I was concerned. I, I mean, to say that we weren't concerned would be ridiculous, but we knew we were going to get him in. I was very confident that it was going to happen. You know, a lot, I saw a lot of people talking, uh, you know, comparing it to Jeremy Stevens getting out of jail that night yeah. and I was pretty was crazy. I was pretty confident I was gonna get Jeremy Stevens out of jail that night, too <laughs> I'm a pretty confident guy. I yeah. feel like when I want to get something done. I can get it done, but uh, Thank God that that Mark Hunt tried to come in three weeks early, you know, so we could uh, Work on this thing. How bored are you or are, are you as bored as Vitor is with the TRT talk? No, I, I mean the TRT talk doesn't bore me. It's uh, you know, I understand it I just think a lot of it has been focused at Vitor and uh, here's the reality, you know, there are a lot of guys on TRT, not only in the, in the UFC, but in sports in general. Lots of guys are on TRT, you know. Don't blame, T don't, don't blame uh, Vitor because he has a better physique than everybody else. I mean, he, he always did. Uh, the reality is, I said a few months ago, guys were going to be tested leading up to their fight. And Vitor Belfort was tested. And uh, he was tested again after the fight. Those results haven't come back, but I'm very confident that he's going to be within the limits that he's supposed to be. Um, I don't like TRT. I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. And the reason that I'm not a fan is because people started abusing it. And, and the one thing that, that, that I, I don't like is people will get all jacked up on TRT throughout their entire training camp and then come back down to normal limits for the fight, which is unfair. So would you rather, though, these fighters just retire? I said that, and people said, I saw somewhere the other day, somebody said, he said, Vitor, you, no, I didn't say Vitor. I said, if you, if you need TRT, maybe you're too old to be fighting anymore, maybe you should retire. I said that to everybody who's on TRT. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I made my stance on TRT pretty clear and where it is, and I, I also made it pretty clear what we were going to do now leading up to these fights. And, and there's this, I just did another interview where these rumors are that, Vitor's fighting in Brazil so that he can avoid the t it's complete yeah. bullshit. First of all, the commission that, that is overseeing uh, Brazil is a legit commission. The ones, same commission, you know, that didn't do, uh, you know, what I thought was a great idea. They pulled Gustafsson from the fight for the cut, you know? So it's not like, oh, this is some commission that's bowing down to whatever the fucking UFC wants to do. That's idiot reporter and, and, and internet rumor stuff. Vitor's fighting in Brazil because he's a huge superstar in Brazil and sells out venues. That's why he's fighting in Brazil, you dummies. And the, well, the thing is, though, is people would say, well, then you're going to lose a lot of your draws. You won't have Dan Henderson. You won't have some of these older fighters who have worked up and made a name for themselves and, you know, put butts in the seats. Mm -hmm. So maybe you guys actually want the GRT so that you can keep making money. Right. Let me tell you what. I mean, I don't know if I could make it any more clear. I mean, how many different ways do you want me to say it? If you have to use TRT, maybe you should retire. 
whether you're Dan Henderson, whether you're Chael Sonnen, whether you're uh, Vitor Belfort, or any of the other guys who are on it or thinking about getting on it. Uh, you know, yes, we'll lose some guys, but there's new guys coming up. Um, um, guys are going to retire anyway. Mm -hmm. Matt Sarah just retired. Uh, you know, there's other guys that are going to be retiring soon. That's how the sport works. That's how all sports works. Uh, you know, you play for a while and then you get to a point where you retire. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, say, "Oh, we love TRT, so we can keep guys around longer." I don't give a shit. If a guy comes to me tomorrow and says, "Listen, I don't want to do this," if it's Anderson Silva, if it's George St. Pierre, if it's uh, Jones Bones Jones, you know, if, if he comes to me and says, "I want to retire." You know what my answer is going to be? Okay. Right. This isn't the sport that you hang around in if your head isn't 100% in the game and you're not mentally into it. You, you don't screw around with the sport if you don't want to fight anymore. You'll never hear me say, don't retire. So you're wrong again. Once again, and I, I do want to ask, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a Diaz Brothers fan. I think they're exciting fighters. Nate got into some trouble with his tweets. Is there, it's always going to be zero tolerance, right? Is there ever going to be a point where somebody can negotiate and say, well, the spirit of what I said was this and it wasn't that and I can get away with this one and maybe this penalty is too harsh? No. Um, I like the Diaz Brothers too and I like Nate Diaz very much. I mean, me and Nate go all, you know, back to the ultimate fighter and um, he's a great kid. You can't say that. And the only way to get people to remember these kind of things is to hit them in the wallet. Because it's funny how that makes people remember a lot more. You know? Um, Mitrione, I'm sure he'll remember. I'm sure Nate will remember next time. Um, and many other guys who are seeing what's happening here will remember. You know, I'm looking at this fight card, Glover Teixeira versus James Tahuna is one that I was actually most excited about. I think they both have a lot to offer. Um, you know, wh where do you see them moving up in the ranks in terms of it with a win? Is James Tahuna, would he crack the top 10? Would he, you know, get a top 10 fighter after that if he gets past Glover? If, yeah, if he beats Teixeira, it's a huge win for him. You know what I mean? And then Teixeira's, you know, getting closer and closer now. I mean, a win for, for him puts him in with one of the big guys after this fight. And Junior Dos Santos, would he get a title shot again if uh, if he gets past Mark Hunt? And Mark Hunt. I mean, it would make sense for both of them to, to get a title shot if they win. Nice, because, you know, the thing with Mark Hunt is people look at his record and they go, ah, I don't know about this guy. But but those who do know about this guy know that he's very dangerous. That's what I said when, when he said, I want to fight there. I was like, eh. yeah, I don't, <laughs> you know, worked in pride. doesn't work here. Uh, and, and he proved everybody wrong. It's a cool story. I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, very nice. Well, thanks for talking with us. It's going to be a great show again. I know you guys always, you know, I feel like as the summer starts to approach the shows, Memorial Day is always great. Uh, uh, Fourth of July with Anderson. And this is a 10 fight deal he signed? He signed a 10 fight deal. And we expect to see at least four fights, maybe? 15. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I wish. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I wish, too. We'll see how it goes. All right. Thanks very much, David. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much.